Hello, my lovely flower painting club, and happy December. Here is your recording and our beautiful mushroom medley. Um, you can see I've got an array of different mushrooms and we've kind of done a color blocking theme here that's really fun and I'm excited to see kind of what you choose to do. Remember you can use your creativity and your imagination to do whatever colors you'd like. Um, I'll definitely show you what I do and take you step by step but please don't feel limited by that. Um, so this right mushroom. It's like a chanterelle. Um, I don't know much about mushrooms, but I do know those because they are quite delicious. So the color combination that I've created uh, for this base wash of the chanterelle is part burnt sienna and part pale rose blush. All right. So like I tell you in all my videos, the magic starts on the palette. So you want to create the mixed color and also the magic sauce on your palette before you ever touch your paper. Here I'm taking a nice yellow. Make sure you reference that color card that I gave you if you're really trying to match the colors. So I took that yellow and I mixed in a little bit of white that's on my palette. And that consistency I'm working with is about 80% water, 20% paint. I'm working with a round four, um, not a very large brush, um, just because they're a little bit smaller. Round fours, round twos, round ones, those are always great to have in there. And what we're doing really for this, this piece is we're starting with a base wash. So a wash in watercolor is just a translucent color of paint on paper. And with watercolor, you learn that paint moves and dances on your paper when you have the right consistency of water. So these are smaller boundaries. These are very small mushrooms. Actually, I take it back. I'm not using a round four. I'm using a round two right now uh, because they are smaller boundaries, right? Those little mushrooms, we don't want to flood them and go over and those really thin stems are small. So base wash first. Um, I love flipping my paper because um, you learn quickly that you combine your, or you run your hand through your work and then you're super bummed. So here I'm mixing up a really nice red. So what you don't see that's off screen is vermilion. It's an orange and I've mixed alizarin, which is the one I'm dipping in right there, magenta to kind of add that pinky hue and then vermilion. All right, so there's a combination of those three and I'm switching to even smaller brush because what I'm trying to do is paint around the white spots on these lovely mushrooms. Um, I've had a few people tell me what they are and I completely, it's like an Amarita, flying Amarita. I always forget, um, but they're pretty fantastic. I don't trust me for my, my mushroom facts. Trust me for my painting facts, right? Um, so here we are. I'm painting around the spots. So this is using the technique in watercolor called reserving. So essentially you're just reserving the white of the paper to keep that bright white. And that is how, as a watercolorist, you do create that crazy white contrast that is really nice uh, when you want the bright whiteness. Like if you're painting a portrait, you'd leave the teeth of the person you were painting as white. Um, so that's what I'm doing with that as well. So here I'm going to just paint the stalk of the mushroom I'm reserving most of the stock as the white of the paper, but I'm hinting at shadow. And that, those shadows I'm also continuing to the inside of the mushroom in the gills, okay? So along the stock, I did that pale rose blush. And on the inside of the gills, I'm doing a mixture of very watered down Payne's Gray and the pale rose blush. So all these paints started as tube paints. There's a nice little close up. All these paints started as tube paints. I, I um, pour them out onto my little palette, as you can see, and then I work with them from their wet, their wetness, right? So I wet them down and then I create that magic sauce and I work from there and I just kind of jump around my palette. So here I've done, again, that combination of that um, pale rose blush plus the Payne's gray and I've created a nice wash on the top of this mushroom and then I dabbed in little bits of Payne's gray. Now here in this mushroom's gills because they're pointed up I wanted to reserve a decent amount of the white as well um, but I, I just I'm hinting at color all right that's 
that's one of the things you learn with watercolor. You hint at color, and if it's not quite enough, you can go back and add more. Um, and watercolor always dries a little bit uh, lighter than when you put it on, um, but it's always nice to hint and then add more because while watercolor is wet, you can do amazing things and keep making changes. So these little mushrooms, um, I am using vermilion. You can see that really bright orange on my palette that I'm accessing. And you can see that consistency. Um, it might be closer to about 50% water, 50% paint for the tops of those mushrooms. Now, the reason that is, is because I wanted it to be really, really bright along the tops, kind of indicating that the tops are brighter than the gills and the little trunk of the mushroom. So what I did is I created that 50% water, 50% texture um, on the top, and then I used water to draw that color down. All right, for this little rounded mushroom, kind of a little button mushroom, I used um, watered down burnt sienna, and then in the gills, again, I, I incorporate that Payne's Gray with the Pale Rose Blush. And here I am going to continue that trunk stem down. Here we go. Through all there. So when you glance at it, you can see that there's a mushroom growing beneath in the background. Now you could do, you know, all sorts of different methods with this. You don't even have to paint it in if you don't want to. I liked the shadow it created. Um, something you see with this mushroom when you look closely at the pictures I provided is it almost looks like there's a shadow going across it and there's hard lines within the gray shadow on that trunk. Um, that was achieved. I will show you in the next few steps. But first, you just want to get that first layer of wash down, which is that really light Payne's Gray. And then we'll go back and I'll show you how to do that um, in our second round. So as I was researching different mushrooms, I often find that inspiration comes from just being outside. And believe it or not, as you've seen in the reference photos, I'm sure the blue of this mushroom is truly found in nature. Um, so I'm using cobalt blue hue to color those mushrooms in. And then you saw me dab right into that um, pale rose blush to just get that, that background of that mushroom in. So now I'm going back and my mushrooms are dry. So basically I finished the blue and now I'm just going back to the chanterelle. So by the time I've painted the blue, that first mushroom is dry so I can play a little bit more and I can add another wash on top. Now this is called wet on dry. It is another form of a wash but the consistency has changed. Notice how much brighter the paint strokes are that I'm making. That's because the consistency of paint and water, that magic sauce I'm using, is more like those vermilion tops or the very top of those cobalt blue hue mushrooms. I wanted that more concentrated color to really come out and shine. Also, by layering this extra bit of watercolor on, you're glazing. So you're adding one layer of watercolor on top of another. So it increases the intensity of color and it creates depth in your piece. Okay, so I'm going to kind of add a little bit of shadow. Feel free to follow along with this or to, again, make your own shadows. Um, see what I'm doing there with my hands. This is one of my favorite things that I do. Um, watercolor brushes are made to hold water, right? But sometimes, depending on how large you're working, that little splatter of water that the brush holds onto, that little raindrop of water it holds onto, can really flood your piece. So often I will pinch the paintbrush when it's just water or even just if it has a little bit of paint, I'll pinch the, br the bristles and kind of get rid of that excess water just so that when I make contact with my piece, it doesn't completely flood the area I'm trying to work in and find detail. All right. So using water to blend and also controlling it by just using your fingertips or even dabbing into a paper towel to get rid of that first initial flush of water will really help control it. Okay. Here I'm adding some nice little details to these mushrooms. I wanted them to kind of to have their own pop and pizzazz. Now these lines aren't drawn in. Um, I just kind of was winging it here and having a little bit of fun. I wanted you to see me drawing these lines because I also wanted you to see what happens when I draw lines and I don't like the overall effect and how to fix that. All right. So I want you to see actually what happens when I do something in my watercolor that I maybe am not too keen on and I want to make changes. Okay. 
So here I am again using that consistency, that burnt sienna, pale rose blush consistency, um, 50% water, 50% paint. In my book, uh, Modern Watercolor Botanicals, I like to make all the analogies related to food. And so that consistency I'm working with is a little bit closer to heavy cream or even moving towards almost a mustard consistency. So there you saw I use the paper towel. So often if it's just water, I'll squeeze it with my fingertips. But if it's paint and water, like my magic sauce, I'll dab it into a paper towel to prevent that flooding when I'm trying to do fine detail work. Um, just because otherwise your hand ends up being covered in paint and you go to grab your painting later and or just right there and you go oh no and you get fingerprints all over so it is nice to use a paper towel it's, they come in handy very often so I just wanted to draw these nice fine lines to make these pop and make them look a little different again this is using that concept that uh, technique called wet on dry um, it's another wash concept um, but the idea is the same. It's the idea of layering translucent layers of color. So watercolor can be such a beautiful, relaxing thing. And as you slowly build color and you slowly build definition, your piece starts to come alive before your eyes, especially when it's hyper sped up. So I always do uh, these videos a little faster for you guys. Um, so know that this is two times fast. Um, I am not painting this fast in real life. So take courage. I move very slowly and slower is better. Um, slow and steady wins the race every time with watercolor. Um, so here you can see how I got rid of those lines that I didn't necessarily like. So I used water. I used a scrubbing motion. And then I entered in a new color over it and I'm still I'm just kind of rubbing out the more um, more stubborn lines kind of using my bristles and because I'm using paper that's 140 pound weight so that means 300 gsm it is I use the Han Muul paper I love it um, arches works as well uh, and if you're on Canson or Strathmore student grade paper that's okay too. I just suggest always using at least 140 pound weight if you're going to do a lot of scrubbing. Um, but you know, if you're on 90 pound weight watercolor paper, that's okay too. I suggest honestly buying supplies and doing doing work with supplies that will actually encourage you to play. Because if you are too worried about messing things up, you won't have the courage to play. See, there's my Canson right there. I love keeping my Canson close by. It's inexpensive. You can play, you feel the freedom to make mistakes, and you can just start over because you haven't messed everything up. Where sometimes if you have a more um, expensive, you know, top shelf paper or top of the line paint you kind of put it away in the drawer and you say oh I'll play with this when I feel a bit more confident but oftentimes that never gets worn or played with or done notice I'm thinking about the special dress or whatever special heels you just got to wear them right no I'm probably not going to paint in brand new heels anytime soon because that just sounds miserable but um I definitely open my expensive paints and I definitely play with my expensive things you know sometimes I create crap work on expensive sheets of paper okay here you can see where I started to just add those layers again um, it is wet on dry um, and I am adding a thicker layer of Payne's Gray. It's about that 50% water, 50% paint. You can see there I used my paper towel to wipe away any excess paint I may have had on my brush and I'm just using water. So once you have that thicker line of Payne's Gray, again the consistency is about 50% water, 50% paint, you can then use water to draw it out. And if you look really closely in the photos that I've attached for this class, you could see several misty layers of blue. And yes, they have hard drawing lines between them. However, with shadowing, um, you can do this. And because you're leaving the white of the stalk, it actually ends up looking really pretty. It's a really great way to do kind of fading misty mountains into the background. Um, and close-ups when you want to do a shadow. So definitely zoom in and definitely you can layer as many layers as you'd like, kind of leaving an irregular jagged line on your wash, which adds a real interest to your piece. 
So here I'm going back again with that thicker consistency paint, uh, both in Payne's Gray and in the Burnt Sienna. And I'm just adding little touches to add shadow and interest to these, you know, little mushroom details to make them look fun and interesting. Here I wanted you to see as well, when I make a mistake, this is what I do. So I had splattered some paint. It's best to pick it up as soon as you see the splatter. It always helps. Um, but I just took a brush, uh, my brush. I cleared it quickly, made sure there was only water in those bristles, and scrubbed back and forth, added more water, scrubbed, and then used my paper towel. And I lifted all the color out, which is it's kind of amazing. Not all colors will lift as easily as that. Um, but it's worth a try. Some colors have more of a staining, but because this is this nice cobalt blue hue, I'm again, just adding details to make it pop more. And again, it's a, another layer of wash. So it's a wet on dry and it's more concentrated paint. Um, so again, 50% water, 50% paint, or even you can see the magic sauce on the palette. It's moving almost more to 80% paint. 20% water. You're kind of almost moving to that more heavy mustard. And then I'm just using the tip of my, uh, just the tip of my paintbrush in the water to kind of draw that color out to make sure it moves on the mushroom. All right. So here I'm showing you, I'm creating that consistency in my Payne's gray. And I'm going to go ahead and add details here. I'm going to do my little leaves. So this is the way I like to do very, very small boundaries. Again, um, a little leaf like this. Uh, it's not the central piece, but it is a really pretty accent and she provides kind of like this rhythm to the piece where your eye moves around all the different mushrooms and these leaves play kind of a background interest, um, but they balance out the piece. So what I'm doing is I put that concentrated um, blue and then I use water to draw the color down the leaf. Right now I'm just getting the details, so I'm just using that concentrated paint for the details. Then I'm checking that water consistency in the point of my brush, and I'm drawing down that color so that the whole leaf isn't fully saturated, but I, this is a really good way to not flood your boundary. So just by adding a tiny bit of color and then using water to complete your tiny wash, really helps you to stay within boundaries if you're really wanting to stay within those watercolor boundaries. And because you have movement and shine, even in these tiny leaf boundaries, movement that which means the paint and water is moving together and shine because the surface of that paint and water is reflecting light you can dab in more Payne's gray and it does that lovely uh, watercolor effect it's known as wet on wet um, it's also called bleeding or veining which I don't like that name, but there, you just see it right there. Um, I don't like that name, so I like to call it fireworks because that's what it looks like. It looks like you're just releasing this amazing color of fireworks in, into a boundary. And that's one of the coolest things I love about watercolor is that when done well, it really does paint itself. And there, it is that dance between a painter and the piece. Um, you learn to play with water and then the water plays back and works as a vehicle to move your paint around and the paint and the water work together to do unexpected things on your paper. It's really exciting to sit back and see and to know that you have helped in this process, but you weren't in control of it the whole time. Um, so then you just sit back and let it dry I cannot wait to see your different combinations and if you choose the same colors, I'm looking forward to seeing your pieces this month. Happy painting.